the Federal Reserve raised interest rates by an expected 75 basis points in what would be the biggest rate hike in nearly 30 years. Who are the winners and losers of the Fed hiking interest rates? Watch the video till the end to know all about this latest shocking development, where the FED just reset the market and the changes that were brought about due to it. Now without further ado, let's discuss the major developments and changes. The Federal Reserve has hiked its benchmark interest rate by 0.75%. But what does that actually mean for hundreds of millions of Americans? Americans who have jobs, who buy things, who have bank accounts. In short, interest rates are the Federal Reserve's main tool to combat inflation. Inflation is driven by strong consumer demand. By raising interest rates, which makes things more expensive, the Fed is hoping to dampen Americans' willingness to spend money. The Federal Reserve on Wednesday, June 15, 2022, launched its biggest broadside yet against inflation, raising benchmark interest rates three-quarters of a percentage point in a move that equates to the most aggressive hike since 1994. Ending weeks of speculation, the rate-setting Federal Open Market Committee took the level of its benchmark funds rate to a range of 1.5% to 1.75% the highest since just before the COVID pandemic began in March 2020. Stocks were volatile after the decision, but turned higher as Fed Chairman. Jerome Powell spoke in his post-meeting news conference. Clearly, today's 7 to 5 basis point increase is an unusually large one, and I do not expect moves of this size to be common, Powell said. He added, though, that he expects the July meeting to see an increase of 50 or 7 to 5 basis points. He said decisions will be made meeting by meeting, and the Fed will continue to communicate our intentions as clearly as we can. We want to see progress. Inflation can't go down until it flattens out, Powell said. If we don't see progress, that could cause us to react. Soon enough, we will be seeing some progress. It is essential that we bring inflation down if we are and have a sustained period of strong labor market conditions that benefit all said Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell at a press conference, and the Fed will continue to raise rates as needed throughout the year if inflation doesn't abate, Powell said. Its next meeting will be in late July. The Federal Reserve got inflation wrong, and now they're trying to correct their mistake by pretty quickly hiking interest rates. And that will slow the economy, said Aaron Klein, a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution, in an interview with NPR. Generally speaking, as the Federal Reserve raises its benchmark interest rate, everything else in the economy that involves interest rates of some kind is affected. And that's most things. Credit cards, student loans, home and car loans, banking, savings accounts, the everyday operations of businesses, you name it. Powell says homebuyers need a bit of a reset. As we open this video with, who are the winners and losers of this scenario? Apparently, Losers are the people trying to buy a home right now. The Fed's interest rate isn't directly tied to mortgage rates, but mortgage lenders move their rates up and down based in part on what they expect the Fed to do. With inflation so bad right now, mortgage rates have been rising all spring. Today, the average 30-year rate is well above 6%, according to Mortgage News Daily. Earlier this year, a 30-year fixed-rate mortgage could be had for around 3.25%. Given a loan of $400,000, the rise in interest rates has turned a monthly mortgage payment of about $1,700 into one approaching $2,500 in the span of just a few months. Housing is getting less affordable for everyone at every level, said Doral Fairweather, chief economist at Redfin. That rapid increase in cost has already priced some potential homebuyers out of the market. Mortgage applications for home purchases in June we're down more than 15% compared to last year, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association. Economists have mixed outlooks on what all this means for the housing market. Some say that home prices will hold steady. Others are forecasting a drop in prices. At the latest Fed's meeting, Powell suggested that prospective home buyers wait to see if prices stabilize. I would say, if you're a home buyer, a young person looking to buy a home, you need a bit of a reset. We need to get back to a place where supply and demand are back together and where inflation is down low again and mortgage rates are low again, he said. 
All right, seems like the home buyers need to stay put for a while. So, who are the winners then? Well, the winners are obviously the people who have money in savings accounts. This one is modest but noteworthy. With interest rates so low for the past few years, banks had little reason or wiggle room to offer any meaningful interest rates on personal savings accounts, where you might keep money for your emergency fund or a down payment savings. Ever since the pandemic began and the Fed dropped interest rates, the average interest rate for a typical savings account hovered around 0.06%, according to the FDIC. Now with the Fed's benchmark rate rising, interest rates are ticking up. Two, some banks, especially internet banks, are starting to offer interest rates on savings accounts of 1% or more. It's important to know that the Fed rate isn't the only factor that banks take into account when setting interest rates. Banks also take into account how much cash customers have deposited and how much competitors are offering. So don't expect to see rates rise. And of course, those interest rates remain lower than current inflation rates meaning that the real value of those savings will still decrease over time. But for people who need savings to be accessible without the risk of a stock market drop, like emergency funds or a down payment for a new home or car, 1% is better than nothing. Other savings vehicles that offer a mix of accessibility and growth rate, like CD and I bonds, are also offering higher returns than in past years. Powell says the Fed can achieve a successful outcome. Even if unemployment rises, the Federal Reserve's updated economic projections show an expected rise in unemployment in the years ahead as the central bank hikes rates to fight inflation. Fed Chair Jerome Powell said that may be a worthwhile trade-off for a healthy economy. If you were to get inflation on its way down to 2% and unemployment up to 4.1%, that's still a historically low level. 3.6% is historically low in the last century. Powell said. So a 4.1% unemployment rate, with inflation well on its way to 2%, I think that would be a successful outcome. Powell added that lower inflation is necessary to have a healthy labor market in terms of real wage gains and strength among all demographic groups. The Federal Reserve will continue to hike rates to bring them to more normal levels, said Chair Jerome Powell. The central bank delivered a 75 basis point rate hike at the conclusion of Wednesday's policy, meeting because it believed strong action was necessary. The federal funds rate, even after this move, is at 1.6 percent, Powell said. The committee is moving rates up expeditiously to more normal levels, and we came to the view that we like to do a little more front-end loading on that. Stocks climbed higher after Powell left the door open for another 7 to 5 basis point rate hike. The major indexes jumped higher after Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell indicated that another 0.75 percentage point rate hike could be possible. Investors cheered central bank officials, taking a tougher stance on inflation. The S&P 500 was up nearly 1.6 percent, while the tech-heavy Nasdaq composite gained 2.6 percent. The 30-stock Dow jumped more than 350 points. Aggressive Fed welcomed by some on Wall Street. Some on Wall Street greeted the Federal Reserve's larger rate hike as a positive sign of the central bank's focus on inflation. The Fed nailed it. Recognizing that hiking more now means less later, the Fed demonstrated its resolve to tame inflation without undermining its employment mandate, said Ronald Temple, head of U.S. equity at Lazard Asset Management. While some spectators argued for an even steeper hike, the Fed understood that the combination of rate hikes and QT already takes the U.S. into uncharted territory with significant risks to growth. The hike today sent exactly the right message to markets. Now, let's take a look at how the crypto industry has reacted to the hike. Fed announces biggest interest rate hike in 28 years, Bitcoin gains. Bitcoin, BTC, was changing hands around $21,444, about an hour after the meeting, up from $21,076 when the decision was released. Most analysts had already priced in the hike in the days leading up to the meeting. Bitcoin's price was again tested on dropping close to $20,000 per coin before recovering to around $22,000 after the Federal Reserve announced it would continue to raise interest rates. 
The jobs market has been a point of strength for the economy, though May's 390,000 gain was the lowest since April 2021. Average hourly earnings have been rising in nominal terms, but when adjusted for inflation, have fallen 3% over the past year. The committee projections released on 15 June 2022 see the unemployment rate, currently at 3.6%, moving up to 4.1% by 2024. All of those factors have combined to complicate Powell's hopes for a soft or softish. Landing that he expressed in a rate tightening cycles in the past often have resulted in recessions. We can't very well point out what the future has in store, but let's wait for some more time to actually see how all of this is going to turn out. And lastly, allow us to remind y'all that this video is only made for infotainment purposes and shall not be considered otherwise as financial or any other sort of investment advice. So be sure to do your own timely wide spectrum research before making any investment-related decisions. Now, what's your opinion on this big move by FED? Do you think all of us will reap good out of this? And how do you think this is going to impact all the departments of the economy under it? Let us know in the comments below. And if you found this video infotainment, hit like and show us your support by subscribing to the channel if you already haven't. Share this video with your family and friends if you feel that this video will help them also. If you have a specific topic you'd like to learn, please leave us a comment below and we'll work on it for you. Until then, stay tuned. Catch you all in the next video.